Every now and then we get a game so odd, so bizarre, I just can't wait to talk about it. And that's what happened in Desmond Ritter's first NFL start in the regular season. The stat line itself was just baffling of uh, 13 for 26 for just 97 yards, under 100 yards, despite the fact that he still threw the ball 26 times. But what happened in this game? How well did he actually play or how poorly did he actually play? I'm going to start off with this play. I'm just going to say it right off the bat. He did not play well. Uh, That's what's going to happen. He played like a rookie, but in a very oddly specific way. Most rookies do not come in and play like this as rookies, but this is how he played in a very unique way that I don't know if I've seen before, to be honest. So this play will perfectly encapsulate what I'm talking about, where you're going to have a linebacker drop back into coverage. That doesn't seem like anything too significant, but it's going to matter a lot in terms of how the offensive line is blocking. Since the linebacker is lined up against the Atlanta Falcon right guard, since he realizes that, okay, someone drops back into coverage, he's going to get over and double team uh, the player who's lined up towards the center. Okay, fine, whatever. Watch, that's what he does. Uh, You see that there is now a potential running lane to get through right here. Now, in college, this is not a potential running lane. This is a clear running lane to move forward and pick up a ton of yards, right? You can, that's what Ritter is, is used to. These are some rookie mistakes that you expect were, you know, for a, a guy to make is trust their legs too much. That's, you know, right up there with some of the most obvious rookie mistakes. Ritter makes a mistake. He runs directly into his own player, which actually juked out an edge rusher. He then scrambles outside and makes a great throw that falls incomplete. And if that doesn't perfectly encapsulate the weirdness of Desmond Ritter's rookie performance uh, in his first game, I don't know what will. There was also just some straight up bad plays that I don't know if it's nerves or what, but something like this is just a very easy play to make. It's a zone coverage play. You're just going to hit Cordero Patterson underneath. Watch. You see that Ritter takes a snap. Patterson isn't even running. He just walks to his spot essentially because it's it's just a check down route. But when Ritter throws it, he looks incredibly uncomfortable and misses uh, Patterson by a, a sizable margin on that play. Uh, there wasn't really much pressure, but he still got, got sort of happy feet there and missed the throw widely. Just an odd thing for him to do. A play like this is another one where it's just like, you don't see this. You just don't see these types of plays happen very frequently. It is a man coverage play. And you, since you have a receiver in motion, that is where Ritter is going to look, which again, makes some sense in my opinion. This is going to be, Alam- uh, I still don't know how to pronounce his, la- his first name, Alamade Zacchaeus is going to be the guy who is in motion. You see Ritter take the snap, runs a play action, and at this point, this is a great another one of those great examples of this is just a rookie mistake, of you underestimate what NFL defensive backs are capable of. In the NFL, you look at this and clearly realize this is a disastrous throw. Do not even make this take this chance but in college it's actually usually a touchdown because you know just the defensive backs aren't as good in college Ritter throws just a perfect pick six that was actually dropped by both players both of those guys ended up dropping the ball on that one again what happened here in New Orleans how did this continuously happen this was all game these weird bonkers plays that you would usually talk about as one of the more wild plays in any given game was seemingly happening two or three times every drive that Desmond Ritter had the football. Sure, he's not playing perfectly. Sure, he's actually playing poorly like a rookie would. You're kind of playing like how you'd expect a third round rookie to play in his first start. All that makes sense. But the oddity in which this game happened was, I think, by far and away, just what made this game one of the more entertaining watches actually for me of the season because I had a blast watching the All-22 and studying just the bizarre nature of these plays. Like a play like this is something that when you watch the broadcast footage, it probably didn't seem like anything that fancy, just kind of a, you know, a dangerous pass. But it's actually a lot more interesting than that, I would say, where it's going to be a zone coverage play. And again, the play concept itself, relatively simple. You have Drake London running from the offense's left to the offense's right, and with a play action to the left, and then Ritter rolls out towards the right. The hope is that you can get him open. Okay, makes sense. Look at how you're going to notice that Ritter runs this play action, and it's for the most part working. There is a window for 
Drake London right here to potentially make the play happen. But what Ritter does not seem to notice here is, again, a defensive back is furiously coming in at a faster speed, and he is going to jump in front of Drake London's route. The reality is you have to time this up perfectly and get it there probably before it's actually open to get the completion, but Ritter just does not notice know to do this stuff yet because he's just a rookie quarterback. That's something that he has not yet learned. There is another Atlanta player open further behind him, but again, you have to take this through Ritter's perspective of Desmond Ritter is used to playing college football where guys do not make those fantastic plays and instead he can be able to hit Drake London when he appears to be open like this. Ritter throws, again, kind of an understandable interception, a very impressive interception. It also was not an interception. This one got called back. So, uh, even with something like this, which again, rookie mistake, there's just something odd on, at the end of it of you have a, you know, the interception get called back. Is this a mistake from Ritter? Sure. Is it a mistake you expect him to make? Also, yes. Is it still a negative play? Again, also, yes, you would still like to see him sort of, you know, I mean, we knew he wasn't going to be pro ready. And I mean, clearly he is not going over here. If you, if I have any major nitpicks, it probably is going to be something like this, I suppose would be uh, one of the things that I would have a nitpick with one of the issues I had with him uh, coming out of college was that, you know, he doesn't have a ton of zip on his throws sometimes, and he puts a lot of air in his deep ball. And that's definitely something that you saw in a, in a situation like this, where it's zone coverage. You have a receiver who's running a route that's going to get into a gap in coverage. Look at how when Desmond Ritter takes the snap and he's going to look in that direction, you see at this point right here, there's a window. Again, I'd like to see him already made the throw now. The timing is just, he doesn't have that yet. He doesn't know he has to throw it earlier to get the ball there in time. He just, you know, that's something he has to learn. But also look at how he doesn't really get enough on it, which allows the defensive back to come in and make the play. So this is the concerns that you definitely have with Ritter is that kind of all the issues that again I'm looking through my notes right now as we speak and all the issues of poor footwork will miss some easy throws occasionally gets tunnel vision not much zip a lot of air on the deep ball all of that stuff we definitely saw in this game the weird thing is it didn't seem to affect them as much as it should have right I mean they still lost the football game maybe they win if it wasn't for that stuff but there probably should have been several interceptions in this game he earned several interceptions in this game that he just didn't end up getting it's fascinating because this wasn't the worst rookie performance I've ever seen by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, you know, uh, I think about Johnny Menzel's uh, first game in the with you know he was actually in a Shanahan scheme with the Browns uh, where he you know uh, just looked like a complete mess. I believe he was sort of forced into that role. I think Shanahan reportedly part of why he left the Browns was because he didn't like that they made him uh, start Johnny Menzel. Uh, this was obviously Shanahan was a coordinator at that point. That game always stands out to me as one of the worst games. I don't think Ritter was anywhere near that bad necessarily, but he certainly wasn't good. I mean, he ends the day with a 43.4 uh, uh, PFF grade, if you're into that kind of thing. Two turnover-worthy plays. He had no actual turnovers, though, but a 3.3, uh, excuse me, 3.7 yards per attempt, which is just not ideal. A 50% completion percentage, and like I said, under 100 total yards on the day. Just an absolutely odd game. Again, I'm having some fun of it. I'm making some jokes about it. I know some Falcons fans will be mad at me in the comments, which is fine. That's part of the fun of this is yelling at each other in the comments section. But I'm not saying that I think that Desmond Ritter is a bust or anything like that. I like Desmond Ritter for the most part coming out of college. But the reality is people are wondering why it took him so long to why it took them so long to make him the starter, I think we clearly realized he just wasn't ready to be a starter, uh, which is why they took kept waiting for it. And I think now he looks like a guy who just isn't ready to be a starter right now. That's kind of how I see it. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.